we know the groups. So even better conditions to start the second part of my AFCON prediction. Not even three months until the tournament starts. My ticket to Ivory Coast is booked. Now let's look at the teams. In the first part of AFCON prediction, we talked about the six underdogs. Now we take the next step and talk about the possible surprises. Again, six teams, six exciting nations. Let's start with Angola, ranked 117th in the world, even behind nations like Guinea-Bissau or Mozambique, which I discussed in their underdog ranking. So why do I rank Angola higher? A brief look back at recent history. From 2005 to 2010, the team was one of the strongest in Africa. You remember World Cup 2006, a squad with Aqua, Mantoras or Rui Marquez? Angola has been far from that in recent years. But hard work has been going on behind the scenes to get back to better times. And these could now begin. The new generation of players is well-educated football-wise. Most of them have played in Europe and know each other well. National coach Petro Gonçalves has known many of the players for a long time, having previously coached the country's under-17 and qualified for the 2019 World Cup with them for the first time. The central players from back then are now mainstays of the national team. For example, Sini, who currently plays for IK Athen in Greece, or Situ Lubumbo, who plays in Serie A for Cagliari. Both have already proven that they do well in the national jersey. The central player is striker Gelson Dalla, who currently plays in Qatar for Al Wakra and thus not at the highest level, but has always performed reliably in the national jersey and scored his goals. Nevertheless, it would of course be better for him if he were also challenged on a daily basis at the highest level. Other central players like Helder Costa or even Cavallero of OSC Lille are not regular starters at their clubs and it will be interesting to see if they can find their form until the tournament. There are also a few factors that will probably only become clear between now and the tournament. Four very strong players could still join the team as they are likely to play for Angola because of their roots. There is Josh Da Silva of Brentford, Florentino of Benfica, Esri Konza of Aston Villa and Andre Vidigal of Stoke City. There are always rumors about a nomination of all of them and the AFCON would be a good opportunity now. The example of Stephen Cocker for Sierra Leone who changed associations just in time for the AFCON 2022 shows that such things do happen. The grown construct, together with perhaps further legionnaires from Europe, forms an absolutely exciting package that can provide surprises. However, the group with Algeria, Burkina Faso and Mauritania is not to be scuffed at. All three are good opponents. In my opinion, the direct duel against Burkina Faso on the last day of group play will be decisive for who finished second and who third in this group. Let's move on to a nation that has often disappointed me in recent years and that I hope can finally write more positive headlines again. South Africa. Bafana Bafana is lucky to have landed in arguably the weakest group of the tournament. Tunisia, Mali and Namibia. Thus actually almost always getting the weakest opponent on paper from each pot. Although that can certainly always be debated. If you disregard the Kusava Cup, the team has been unbeaten for many months. Nevertheless, it must also be said that there is hardly any support among the population. Only a few spectators come to the international matches. But why is that? There was the big stage, the 2010 World Cup in your own country. Instead of creating a football hype in South Africa, there have always been disappointments. Many wrong decisions by the Federation and the fans have become more and more distant. There are always discussions about whether players are treated differently by the big clubs and enjoy an advantage with their respective coach. The fans will probably never agree. Marmelodi Sundowns vs Kaiser Chiefs vs Orlando Pirates. The Sundowns currently have the strongest block. Almost all players come from the domestic league, which is one of the strongest on the entire continent. But the absolute top players are missing. The heart of the team is the central midfield. 
It provides great stability. South Africa is a team for the classic AFCON result 1-0. We will not see many goals here. The team has difficulties creating chances. The game often lacks a creative factor, the brilliant idea. Moreover, the team has difficulties to perform at a constant level for 90 minutes. A good health is followed by a bad one and so on. But with Hugo Bros, they have an experienced Belgian head coach, who doesn't play the most modern football, but can always adapt to the conditions and the opponent, important in a tournament like this. Star and most important player? Sure. Lyle Foster from Burnley. He is a dangerous striker, probably the only one at the very highest level, the Premier League. He has good instincts, is fast and physically strong. So, like so many other teams, South Africa is dependent on the form of their star striker. With him, South Africa also hopes to finally have a big name and a figurehead for football in the country again, after Benny McCarthy or Steven Pinar. Such a role model is important for football to stand up to rugby and also win back the fans and the public. Because of the good draw, I trust South Africa to make it to the knockout stage. And once the train is rolling, who knows what it can lead to. Let's move on to Equatorial Guinea. Recent performances have been rather disappointing, but the small country has qualified again. And those who have followed the last AFCONs know that they are always a force to be reckoned with. Since the tournaments as hosts, the country has increasingly established itself in the continent's top 10. The last time they reached the quarterfinals was in 2022. But the team must be careful, not to oversleep the generational change. The best known player, Emilio Enzoe, is also getting older and only plays in the lower classes in Spain. He will only be able to help the team sporadically and with short appearances, in general. Many players tend to play in lower leagues, rather than in the big European ones. That's why working together on the pitch is the key. It's quite special that the players in the national jersey always reach a higher level and make you forget where they actually play in the club. The games are rarely pretty to look at, but the team has already achieved greater success with its own methods. The focus is on the defense. While up front they put a lot of hope in mistakes made by the opponents or free kicks and corners. The most important player in the squad is José Machín from Monza. He is a dangerous midfielder who can give the game moments of brilliance. A combination of Machín, Ganet and Bicoro in midfield is unpleasant for any opponent, but all three must look to get into form before the tournament. The team is almost always underestimated before tournaments. I hope that doesn't happen to me this time. The unmistakable style has brought a lot of success. Coach Juan Misha has ensured consistency on the bench and can develop the team bit by bit. It will be crucial that the players reach their absolute performance limits. Otherwise, there could be problems in an early exit. Because individually, many teams are better. The group with hosts Ivory Coast, Strong Nigeria and Guinea-Bissau also dims hopes. But I repeat, don't be surprised if Equatorial Guinea surprises everyone again and maybe even leaves one of the two favorites behind. Cape Bird also has to leave the favorites behind. The small island has two heavyweights in its group, Egypt and Ghana, and Mozambique will have a very hard time. Cape Bird has been experiencing a big upswing in football since 2013. Small island, big football enthusiasm. It is already the fourth AFCON participation. Twice the team was in the knockout stage. The style of play is very much tailored to their strength. The team plays straightforward, wants to score quickly. You will rarely find them in front in the possession statistics. The team is susceptible to crosses and high balls. The last results were disastrous. They were defeats against Togo and the Comoros. The most important player in the team is Gary Rodriguez. He is sought after on the offensive and provides the goals and the moments of brilliance. He also has a good sense of passing at the right moment. No player from the national team plays in the domestic league. Many players have never played there, but were born and educated in Europe. There is still a strong bond with Portugal. The players come from the academies there. Players who could help the team such as Ricardo Gomez or Giannini are probably not available for the AFCON due to incidents in the past. Nevertheless, players from European leagues are available for all positions. These, however, are rarely at the very highest level. 
there could be a lack of quality at the top. In the past, the team could also rely on the surprise factor, but by now Cape Verde is known and everyone can adjust to it. If you put all these factors together, you would actually have to see them as underdogs. But that's exactly where the big opportunity lies. And I'm also curious about the matchup against Ghana. For me, a close game in which the stars like Kudus have to be stopped. Two teams left. Next up, Zambia. Zambia and AFCON. Of course, the biggest sensation in tournament history. 2012. The tournament victory against Drogba, Touré and so on. Legendary to this day. But much controversy and little performance followed. And so was the last AFCON qualification in 2015. But in June, there was a 3-0 victory over Ivory Coast. Football in the country is on the rise again. Where does the development come from? With Avram Grant, a coaching legend, is at work, who already coached Chelsea and of course has a lot of experience. The most important player is Patson Daka. Five goals in six AFCON qualification games is a very strong mark. He is in beast mode in the national jersey, but there are problems at the club. After a failed move in the summer, he has yet to make an appearance in the championship, currently languishing at Leicester. His quality is definitely huge, but he's unlikely to get to AFCON in top form completely without games. Another important player is Topila Zunzu, the 2012 final hero, still playing and the leader of an otherwise young team. A great talent is Lamek Banda on the left wing. He had a good start to the season with Lecce in Serie A. He has great pace and is difficult to defend. The team has grown together, consists largely of the team that won the 2017 under 20 AFCON. At that time, Daka, Mwepu, Dakala, Chilufi or Emmanuel Banda, this axis which has known each other for a long time forms the framework, along with veterans such as Sunzu and Roderick Kabwe. The last two Kusava Cup titles went to Zambia. Football in the country is on the way to its former glory. Now, one more good performance at the AFCON and the passionate fans at home will be reconciled. Even the group does not seem insurmountable. Morocco, DR Congo and Tanzania. Stronger opponents would have been possible. Who knows, the country is familiar with football miracles. The legends of yesteryear will be rooting for the team, with one of them still on the pitch. And last but not least, Guinea. And of course we have to talk about the striker. Cerro Girassi is currently breaking all records in the Bundesliga. But there is a question mark behind the second big name. How is Nabi Keita's body? As in recent years, he is constantly injured and has missed the entire start of the league, his presence in midfield and the order in the game that follows. Guinea can't do without that. And then there's the group, which could not have been more difficult. Senegal, Cameroon, the Gambia, the group of death. What the squad lacks is white. As mentioned with Girassi, Keita, but also Amadou Diawara, Francois Kamano or Ilas Moriba, they have players from whom a lot can be expected but they are also irreplaceable. In defense, it will be Mukhtar Diakabi from Valencia, who has to lead and coordinate his teammates. But even with him, you have to be careful that he doesn't suffer from an injury. If everyone is fit, Guinea can do really, really well. I'm not talking about the final, but almost anything up to that point. But this group can also end without any points, if key players are injured or out of form. As always at the AFCON, there are many secrets and things that only the tournament will tell us. But for me, Guinea is probably the biggest mystery. Understanding this coach, Kaba Diawara, and his team is difficult. If the opponents in the group feel the same way, there doesn't have to be a disadvantage. We will look at it quite closely. So that was the second of four parts of my outlook for next January's AFCON. Subscribe to the channel now to not miss anything and also see my prediction for the other 12 teams. See you soon.